How's it? How's it? Do you ever feel like the framing in your composition somehow not quite right? There's something off that you you can't put your finger on. Despite when you look at you know other people's photography, framing seems so simple. It's like one of those kind of cool things that you learn about composition and photography, and you think, oh, I'm like I'm like a boss. But later on, it doesn't quite always land. So why is this? Why is is framing on the top of things so simple and yet so difficult to to get right? So we'll tap into that in a second. But first, I want to say a big thank you to today's sponsor of this video, PicDrop. PicDrop is an online sharing service where you can easily upload and have people comment on your photographs. One of the things I particularly like about this is its simple ease of use. You, all you do to upload images is just drag and drop. You don't need to install any software, any malarkey, mucking around with anything like that. It is as simple as. The best thing is, of course, that you can have your friends and your family, clients, upload images to that self same gallery so long as you give them a link. Pick drop is being invaluable with me in running the cohorts because I am able to use their fantastic scribble feature to make notes on the students' photographs to give them some feedback. Be sure to get your free trial by clicking on the link in the description box below. Composition is full of all these rules, you know, rules of third and golden spirals and ratios and Fenerbahce diggly woos and things like that. And it's easy to get overwhelmed. There's all these things. So, you know, framing seems like a relatively simple thing. It's like you put a frame around something in an image and Bob's your uncle's auntie live and love her, right? It's all good. It's there. And, you know, you've now elevated your photography. So somebody like Alex Webb, is, is a master at framing. Everything seems to be just so. Like you look at it and you go, that's obvious. Why, why could it be anything but this? Everything just seems to, to come together. And you, you think, well, that's so simple. All you need to do is just, you know, find something within a scene that can contain another part of the scene. And, and instantly your photograph's gonna be, be awesome. And unfortunately, that isn't actually the case. It was the other day I was looking at some things about composition where I learned something new, because this is one of the cool things about photography, you're always learning something new. I forget which book it was in, but I was putting together some notes for a lesson I was doing for the cohort that has just completed, and there is another one coming up at the end of April, if you're interested, there's still a couple of spots below, you can check out the link there if you're interested. And I read a passage, and I, I totally forget which book it was in right now, so otherwise I would go and get it. But it talked about framing. And, and I had always just looked at framing, possibly as, as you have, as, okay, I'm going to just find something in the scene, as I said earlier, that you can just you know, put around something to contain it, to frame within a frame. So far, so simple. But the passage in this book threw everything for a complete loop, which was great because it's completely changed the way that I think about framing. And it's just a shame it's taken me 30 years to discover this. Something that, you know, we was, I think a lot of us come to fairly slowly through intuition, but this book put it into sharp perspective. Now we've been looking at Alex Webb's photography and throughout the history of photography, there are many people who use framing to you know, to, to great effect. It just, it just works. It feels great. But I kind of feel that the best way to understand why it works is to look at how images feel when they don't work. So who are these poor guys who are kind of like, you know, they've tried to use what is like a basic thing of a framing, you know, put an element to, to keep thing, and it's just not landed. Right, so, so let's look at some of these photographs here. I've, I've gone on to to Pexels or you know, one of these kind of free photo sharing websites. And I'm not pointing out these images, as, and I think we need to make this clear, as that they're bad photographs, right? So they're not bad photographs. Everybody who's taking these photographs has used what they've been taught. Take a frame, an element, and frame it, much like we've been talking about. But what feels off about these images? What is it, as we look through them, 
that doesn't make them feel as accomplished as, say, somebody like Alex Webb. We're not talking about the color. We're not talking about, you know, advanced layering composition. I want you to think about just purely the framing that the photographers employ. Do you recognize within this some of your own framing ideas that you've, you've tried from time to time? Have you seen it yet? Have you seen what's kind of not quite landing here? Right? Because it's, it's so, so once we know, it's going to be amazing. So what's happening is that the frame itself doesn't enhance and doesn't fit naturally with the entire scene. I've, I've thinking, I'm kind of paraphrasing, but that's the gist of what this, this paragraph was, was talking about in that book. Successful framing in photography is, is a whole. You can't just slap on a piece of cardboard making a frame and, and expecting that picture to work. The frame itself, first and foremost, needs to feel like it fits in that scene. All right, so we look at Cartier Bresson's picture of the kids jumping around in that hole in the wall. The hole in the wall, which is the framing element, suits the scene, doesn't it? It feels like it's a natural part of the scene and it enhances the photograph, much like when you have a landscape and the, the, the foreground or the sky or something is framed by trees or something that belongs there. The framing elements complement the scene itself. So it's, it's, it's so simple, isn't it? it? It's there, right? So from now on, like whenever you are looking at your photographs, and you're looking for framing, think about these ideas. Right, so first of all, does the frame itself complement and fit naturally into what it is you're photographing? Right, so it could be wherever you are. We won't get into like talking about juxtaposition and, and you know, sort of the, the yin and yang of different elements working together. Let's just get the basics right. Let's get a solid foundation to, to go off exploring later on. You've got the, the framing fit with the whole, right? Does the framing actually make the image stronger? Sometimes, you know, I, I've chosen framing and it's all kind of wada wada wada, and, and it hasn't actually made the image any better. I've just put it in there because I'm trying to show off. Right? Look how much I know about photography. So that's kind of in an element. So don't worry too much about, you know, you know, having to put frames in. Like, like anything else in photographic composition, this is about what is working, what feels right. You know, leaning into your intuition and understanding that, yes, that is actually my, my gut is telling me the right thing. And your gut sometimes say, look, we don't need. I really hope that, you know, this, is, this has opened up your perspective about how you actually think about framing in, in a photograph. Because on the face of it, isn't it? It seems so simple, and yet there's, there's a lot of nuances and subtleties to it. So you're gonna go out there, take some awesome photographs here, like Alex Webb. It's a simple, just mindset shift. Certainly for me, it was a, a big light bulb moment. If you would like to, you know, as I said, join me on the next cohort, which is beginning at the end of April, there are a couple of spots left. We're gonna jump into composition, lighting, being creative with your photography, you know, really kind of, you know, taking you to the next level irrespective of where you are in your photographic career. Click on the link in the description box below. It'll be fantastic to see you there. In the meantime, though, check out this video over here. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon.